Ricky, we've got Signature Max today on Box Mac. Not just Signature, but Signature Select. Yeah, when you first pulled them out, I said, Signature, Signature, that, that rings yeah. a bell. We must have done it before. Yeah, Signature uh, Kitchen. Yeah. This is Signature Kitchen's original macaroni and cheese dinner from <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> but not Signature Select. Never these. I assume they're just like a generic brand you can get for your store, right? You know, you have a supermarket, you want a mac and cheese, you want a whole product line, here it is. I seem to remember these at like Star Market or Shaw. Yeah, I, I think that Shaw's does carry these. Safeway? Yep, Safeway. Albertsons? Sure. Shaw's? Yep. There you go. Vons? Vons? Acme Markets? Acme Markets? I want an anvil from them. Jewel Osco? Yep, that's a stop and shop family. Cars with two R's? Don't know that one. TomThumb.com? I have heard of Tom Thumb. Pavilions? Never heard of that one. <laughs> Randall's with two L's. I've never heard of Randall's. Hagen. H-A-G-G-E-N. No, no. This is like a fun game. Star Market. Of course. Balducci's. The Washington Post. No, it's a review. <laughs> Wait, somebody actually reviewed this product? Well, it says the best and worst store-bought mac and cheeses from 2019. Actually, I remember we've talked about this before, this very article. The Washington Post posted something. We tried 20 store-bought mac and cheese brands to determine which is the best. Uh, look, big fat paywall. There's no paywall here, folks. Yeah, no paywall. Come on in. Watch our 500 plus macaroni and cheese reviews. Yeah, when we were uh, verifying that we hadn't done them, yeah. I said, well, how many rows are there in the mac and cheese database? Because yeah. some we've done twice and some are homemade. So it's hard to say that it's that many max, yeah. but how many tastings? Yes. 545. That is incredible. <laughs> and we're about to add four more today, or nearly 1%. A little more than three per show, on average. We got a somewhat attractive looking in a nice green package here. Oh, how come it wasn't in green. the Guinness episode? Yeah. yeah. Cheddar sauce and cheese, which actually looks delicious. The packaging really appeals to me. I yeah? Know. The brightness of those shells is something that speaks to me. Filled with earthly goodness and green penis. <laughs> yes. Yes, rosebud frozen peas. Full of country goodness and green penis. A nice looking white cheddar and two deluxes here. Are they just the same thing with different pastas? I think, well. We'll wait. One has what, what's going on here in the boxes? <laughs> I mean, is it just two mac and cheeses or three? They have hugely different calorie counts, but I have no idea what the difference is. Rich and creamy is this oh, one. That's rich. Oh, well, that's this is too. Rich. I'll run a diff. Yeah, run a diff. Use Beyond Compare if you would. <laughs> If only you could just like yank text out of I know. physical items. AI, very soon. You give it a photo, it'll do it. <laughs> People keep saying we need to do a chat GPT box back episode. No. I, I'm fascinated by that technology. I think it's incredible. Okay, is it the sizes? Because the, the... You're trying to figure it out still? Ingredients are pretty similar. Yeah. Oh, well, 12 versus 14. Oh, there you go. That's the answer. What was the last time you wrote on a little package of Mac? It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. We've been doing some kind of more special episodes of Box Mac lately. A very yeah. special Box Mac. The one where JTT finds out he has a lump on his balls. <laughs> I don't want to die, Dad. Oh, come on, man. You're not going to die. Do you remember that episode of Home Improvement? You know, because Tim Allen's such a goofy bastard and he's like holding JTT tight. We beat this thing, no matter what it is, you know. I'm not letting anything happen to you. A special Home Improvement followed by the Diet Mug Root Beer Dana Carvey <laughs> Show. <laughs> I mean, everybody remembers girls carving into their shoes his, j, the letters J T. Imagine, imagine if you were so popular, girls all over the country were carving your initials into their shoes with pink pen. Could that ever happen again? I mean, it probably did with Bieber, the Korean boy band there, whatever they are. Oh yeah, they're very hot. BTS. Oh, BTS. That's right. It only took us forty seconds. It's. I was like behind the scenes. Behind, yeah, it's behind like, the scenes. EJ and I were on a real riff yesterday about um, this critical race theory sure. thing. Well, we were. The joke was that somebody is confused and thinks you're talking about CRT televisions. <laughs> I support yes. CRT in the home. I support <laughs> CRT in schools. Whenever we have a, a light day of curriculum, we roll CRT into the classroom. Bill Nye is very supportive of CRT. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, golly. Oh, good gravy. Oh, oh good golly, Miss Molly. Oh, jeepers crow crime any Dutch. Uh, so that's JTT. Yeah. And didn't he also actually leave home improvement quite early? He did, to pursue other career opportunities. Like Pinocchio. <laughs> he really paid off. <laughs> Tales to Fox, cool, man. Yeah, Tales to Fox, I don't know. Tales of Fox to Tales, cool. Pay me. There was a Halloween episode of Home Improvement. Trick-or-treaters showed up to the house 
and one kid is dressed as Simba and one kid is dressed as Buzz Lightyear and they made a little joke. One candy bar for the spaceman and uh, seven for the cute little lion. <laughs> Who knew that years later, Chris Evans would steal that candy? I thought it was a genuinely kind of funny show. Wilson never seeing his face, that's funny. Yep, it is. The tool time gags were, were like, I laughed. Well, who can forget the man's kitchen? Oh, yeah. Yes. That's, and that's the man's a, bathroom. Are... That was event television. That was like, you yell for your Tune sibling. TV. The men's bathroom is on. You'll get to watch television in your bathroom. Jeez, Tim, you spent so much time in the bathroom, you won't know what's going on in the big game. Got it covered. <laughs> Nowadays, like you bring a little yes, television. You bring your television with you to the bathroom intentionally. You know, the other thing like that for me, it still captures my imagination, even though the, the technology has outpaced it entirely. A built-in car television with Game Boy Advance. Yes. I don't know with what controller. Was it a GameCube controller maybe? But anyway, nowadays you go to Five Below and they're like, here's a headrest for your Switch. Just plug the Switch in, you, pl <laughs> you know. So I have a pair of AirPod Pros uh -huh. that I've enjoyed. And one of them has like this really bad tinniness now. It made basically the right ear unlistenable. I'm I'm at Five Below just yesterday. They had for $8, like a little pair of Bluetooth headphones, kind of very similar. So I was like, I wonder what would happen if I bought the $8 version. And it sucks. <laughs> you can't wirelessly charge them. If you're not careful, you'll accidentally pair one of them and not the other oh one. Oh my God. You get what you pay for. GBA Car, the Visteon dockable entertainment system is a portable DVD player created in 2006 for the US market at an MSRP of $1,300. Holy oh. crap. The player is notable for containing officially licensed Game Boy Advance hardware, as Visteon partnered with Nintendo to announce the product at CES 06. If I saw a video about that on YouTube, I'd watch it. I you saw Lady Decade, the missing. <laughs> the missing GBA DVD portable system <laughs> for your car. Necessities for gracious living. At the flea market, they have one of those built-in NES into your television. Like oh yeah? Introduce a model mounted into headrests for $1,700. Later that year, the company expressed interest in creating similar products for the Nintendo DS and Wii platforms, though neither materialized. I imagine it would be hard with the gimmick. Yeah. Uh, to, to this day, I'm like, oh, well, huh? But I'm like, you could just. <laughs> also, like, even at the time, just bring the GBA, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like what it's for. So why wouldn't they have at least put a GameCube in this thing? Uh, it's a DVD player. So that you could be like, no, 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 we recognize that the Game Boy is portable. You don't need to consoleize it for the car. Yes. Even though that's what I want. I doubt they made less than a thousand of those. You want to see what they go for? Probably oodles of dollars. $1,500. Oh, oh, but there's your remote. There's your controller. It's a controller for your DVD player that you can play GBA on. All right, making some Mac here, as one does on Box Mac. What would you choose, Beekman or Bill Nye? Bill Nye. I choose Beekman. Yeah. I like that weird <laughs> pervert rat. Oh, I do like the rat. That is true. <laughs> the girl on that ended up being a voice on South Park. She's like one of the females on South Park. Oh. I swear I'm gonna kill you, Stan. You're stimulating the dog, Stanley. Beekman just was more creative to me, I don't know. I agree, and also it was it was less educational. <laughs> and the penguins, you know? The penguins just made me feel like it was Saturday morning, not Thursday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> but here's something I need to know from the audience. This is very important. I know you all are gonna know what I'm talking about. All right. Maybe EJ won't, that'll be fascinating. The tradition of checking out during the school day is a television comes in and you watch Bill Nye. <laughs> That's tradition. But there's a lower tier than that, folks. Yeah. There's a bigger version of giving the fuck up on school than that. It's when the teacher plays seven up with the class. Seven up? Do you not know what I'm talking about? Okay, do you not know? No. Everybody's all tired. Yeah. And they go, let's just play seven up until the bell rings. Everybody puts their heads down on the table. Oh, and the thumb. And yeah. Oh, and yeah. certain people tag you. And if you get tagged, you put your thumb up. And then when they turn the lights back on, you have to say, I think John tagged me. You have to, yeah, yeah it's, it, to it's a stupid game. So there's no educational value whatsoever. None. Wouldn't it be amazing if, if it turns out the whole country's been playing seven up and I didn't know, you know, in Ma over here in mass, we play seven up. When a teacher doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Aw, teachers don't give a shit. They play seven up, kid. Yeah, when your teacher didn't give a shit. What did you do? Because we had closed circuit television for uh, Channel One News. Yes. Do you guys remember Channel One I News? I do, I do. Opportunity to sell products by them giving free schools. Well, maybe the state government sponsored it where they were like, here. This no, it was a private company. Big private company came in and said, we'll put TVs in all the classrooms yeah. if you let us run this program that contains a couple ads. I remember one of the ads was Smash Brothers 64. It was Pikachu, Donkey Kong, and Mario in their full costumes. Me and you, and you and me. Yes. And it, you know, like if you had like a, a prison riot 
<laughs> and you just fed a little bit of blood to the shark, so you just made them remember the taste of wine. Kind of wake one of them out of their stupor and be like, come on! Seeing that on that TV in the morning when we were all trying to stay awake. Some slight trouble with this one. It's way too thick. That's the deluxe with the shells. They look good. Yeah, I look fine. Signature select, man. That's something that a few thousand supermarkets can hang their hats on. Something's wrong in the Mushroom Kingdom. Something's gone wrong in the happy-go-lucky world of Nintendo. Frankie, I gotta say, you didn't do a great job mixing this one. There's lots I was of talking. cheese. All right, let's start with this elbow deluxe. It's all right. It's as basic as it gets, folks. Yeah, it's kind of a little sour. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Life doesn't have to be perfect. Right as long as it's better than it was. Yeah, the campsite rule of Max. Yes. Leave it cheesier than it, you found it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try the shells one next. The shinier looking one? The shinier shells. Same thing, basically? Yeah, a little better, of course. Shells make it a little better. The thing about store brands, yep. I'd say they're 10% more sour on average. I don't know why that is. It's a decent Max, decent Deluxe. Do you think the store brands are going for longer shelf lives? Yeah, I think so. Let's try the other shell. The one that already dried out a little? A little bit. It's okay. I, I prefer the other one. Well, this is a not deluxe. Oh, this tastes like butter. Yeah, it does taste very buttery. Come to think of it, I really enjoy butter and mac. Yeah, it's good. I'm not tasting right? a lot of cheese here. Yeah, it's, it's like a buttery creamy. Speaking of buttery creamy, let's go with... White cheddar. Oh, I kind of like it. Yeah, it tastes like cheddar. It's got a pretty good white cheddar flavor. Yeah. I think that the white cheddar is a little bit better. And the others are fine. Have you become more of a white cheddar man since doing box mac? Yeah. I like sharper cheese in general now. I don't know if that's just like maturation of palate or what, but white cheddar is usually a little sharp. There's a lot of stuff that's just real okay. A large range of mediocrity. Yeah. A pretty large range of, of disgusting Macs. And then quite few in the in the rarefied in air. In the rarefied air. Yeah. I think Macs are better now than they were when we started. Do you think we had anything to do with it? No. <laughs> We definitely experienced it as a key part of our lives. I see a lot more mac and cheese talk than oh, yeah. ever. Yeah. And yet we have this show that doesn't it's pick good. up any steam. So some OK Macs, we'll see you next time on Box Mag. Imagine me and you, I do. I think about you day and night. It's only right to think about the girl you love and hold her tight. So happy together.